Lithium ion batteries are the dominant power source for electronic devices like phones, tablets, and laptops, etc., and also for electric vehicles. But a potential challenger awaits, the sodium ion battery. But are these new sodium ion batteries really a good replacement for lithium ion batteries? And what are the benefits and downsides of these batteries versus lithium ion batteries? Stick around to find out. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. Sodium ion batteries are here, not in a lab, but in actual production EVs being built in China. While these initial sodium ion battery powered EVs are short on range and are being produced in limited volume, giants in the industry are getting into the sodium ion game like BYD and CATL. And in addition, the energy density of these batteries is set to increase in the coming years with future generations of the technology. So the range of sodium ion powered EVs should improve in the future. Now, as I move into a comparison of lithium ion battery technology to sodium ion battery technology, I think it's important that I step back and really discuss why these batteries are being developed. Why mess with sodium ion batteries since lithium ion batteries are doing so well? Well, it looks like one of the main reasons why sodium ion batteries are being developed comes down to the abundance and lower cost of sodium versus lithium. This is especially important as the demand for battery grade lithium increases. And it's projected that even as soon as in 2025, there may be a deficit when it comes to the amount of lithium that is needed to build these lithium ion batteries. So adding another battery chemistry to the mix that does not require lithium has huge benefits, especially in the future. On the topic of lower cost, according to this Energy Post EU article, it looks like the future cost of sodium ion batteries could be as low as around $40 per kilowatt hour. And according to this article on nextbigfuture.com, it looks like CATL's first generation sodium ion battery cells cost around $77 per kilowatt hour, but that in the future that could drop below $40 per kilowatt hour. So with those two reasons in mind, it's really obvious why companies are developing sodium ion batteries. But with that being said, what are some of the differences between lithium ion batteries versus sodium ion batteries? And can sodium ion batteries really fully replace lithium ion batteries in the future? Both battery types internally feature an anode, a cathode, a separator, and an electrolyte. And on a surface level, lithium ion and sodium ion batteries function in a very similar way. The movement of ions and the flow of electrons work together to store and release energy. But obviously, in the case of the lithium ion battery, that battery uses lithium ions and the sodium ion battery instead uses sodium ions. Now I will discuss the energy density of sodium ion batteries versus lithium ion batteries shortly, but I want to talk about more positives of sodium ion batteries before I get there. But with that being said, for our comparison, I did want to note that when you compare sodium ion batteries to lithium ion batteries, it's best that on the lithium ion side that you compare sodium ion batteries to lithium iron phosphate chemistry because the lithium iron phosphate battery technology is the lower cost, lower energy density lithium ion battery version. And sodium ion batteries are a lower cost, lower energy density battery. So with that being said, another benefit of sodium ion batteries is impressive cold weather performance, especially as compared to LFP lithium ion batteries. In this CNEV post article from January of this year, it's written quote, Sodium ion batteries have better low temperature performance with over 92% capacity retention at negative 20 degrees Celsius. In this CATL press release about sodium ion batteries, a very similar cold weather performance claim was made where it was written, quote, moreover, in a low temperature environment of negative 20 degrees Celsius, the sodium ion battery has a capacity retention rate of more than 90%. Beyond the cold weather performance, there's also a safety benefit because sodium ion batteries are generally considered to be safer than lithium ion batteries because sodium as an element is less reactive than lithium. 
It also looks like sodium ion batteries have the potential to be able to be charged faster than lithium ion batteries because CATL claims that their batteries can be charged to 80% in 15 minutes. And this is better than Tesla's EVs that generally take around 30 minutes or so to do the same kind of charge there. And even with an 800 volt system, like with the Hyundai Ionic 5, that charge time takes around 18 minutes to go from a 10% to 80% state of charge. According to my research, it looks like the main reason for a lower energy density of sodium ion batteries comes down to the fact that lithium ions are smaller and lighter than sodium ions. And this smaller size allows lithium ions to be packed more densely within the battery's electrode materials, which enables higher energy storage capacity per unit of volume or weight. In addition, lithium has a lower electrochemical potential as compared to sodium. And this means that lithium tends to release more energy per electron as compared to sodium when donating electrons during reactions. With that being said, I now wanna move into an energy density comparison of lithium ion batteries to sodium ion batteries. But do note that the numbers I'm going to be mentioning here are gravimetric energy density numbers, meaning the amount of energy as compared to the weight of a battery cell or the weight of a battery pack. And volumetric energy density numbers would be very helpful, especially when we're talking about how many battery cells you can fit into a battery pack. But since I don't have those numbers available for sodium ion battery technology, we're just going to stick with gravimetric energy density, which will at least give us a good basis for comparison. Now, as you take a look at this chart, note that the top three examples there of lithium ion batteries are high nickel battery chemistries. And as I mentioned previously, it's really best to compare sodium ion batteries to lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are lithium ion batteries just with an LFP chemistry. It's really best to compare those two battery types because LFP batteries are the lower cost, lower energy density versions of lithium ion batteries. So that's the best comparison here. So if we move down to that fourth row, you can see that the cell level energy density of CATL's LFP prismatic batteries that are used in the rear wheel drive model three are estimated to be around 190 watt hours per kilogram. When you compare that to CATL sodium ion battery technology, according to a press release, their batteries have an energy density of up to 160 watt hours per kilogram. In addition, using data from CNEV post, you can see that I've also listed here the energy densities of two other uh, sodium ion battery technologies that are being used in Chinese made EVs. And those energy densities range from around 140 watt hours per kilogram to around 160 watt hours per kilogram. So 160 watt hours per kilogram is about 15.8% less than 190 watt hours per kilogram on the gravimetric side. However, once again, volumetric may be more important. For example, Ferris's Energy is providing sodium ion batteries for a Chinese made EV. And that Chinese made EV has a battery pack capacity of 21.4 kilowatt hours with that sodium ion battery pack. According to this article, that same electric vehicle with a lithium ion battery pack has a battery size of 31.15 kilowatt hours. If we assume that 21.4 kilowatt hours is really maxing out the space available for the battery pack, then that means that the sodium ion battery pack has around 31% less capacity than the lithium ion battery pack. And that could translate to a volumetric energy density difference of also 31%. I don't know if that's exactly the case, but it does show the scale here that volumetric energy density can play a bigger role than gravimetric energy density when it comes to how many battery cells you can fit into a battery pack. That seems obvious because once again, gravimetric has to do with weight and volumetric has to do with volume. That doesn't necessarily mean that CATL's battery pack technology will have such a drastic difference as well because CATL has a cell to pack technology for their battery packs and they have figured out how to very efficiently pack battery cells in a battery pack. So with all that being said, since the volumetric energy number is a wild card, I want to use the Model 3 as an example, the rear wheel drive Model 3 going with a gravimetric energy density estimates that we have. And I wanna talk about how much range could potentially be available for a sodium ion powered Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive. So with that being said, the rear wheel drive Model 3 that's equipped with CATL LFP prismatic batteries, that vehicle has an EPA rated range with 18 inch wheels of 272 miles. 
If that rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3 were instead equipped with sodium ion batteries, and of course this is a lot dependent on the volumetric efficiency of how they pack the battery cells into the battery pack. But nonetheless, I believe that a rear wheel drive Model 3 equipped with first generation uh, sodium ion battery cells from CATL could potentially be somewhere um, around 200 miles of range or slightly more than that. So even if the cost of these sodium ion batteries at scale is less than even lithium iron phosphate batteries, because of that lower range, I don't expect that the Model 3 will get these sodium ion batteries at any point in the near future. Now, there is room for improvement for these sodium ion batteries, and we are once again in the first generation of this battery tech, and future generations should be improving. For example, in this CATL press release from 2021, it was written, quote, the next generation of sodium ion batteries energy density development target is to exceed 200 watt hours per kilogram. If CATL's second generation of sodium ion battery cells is also able to have a huge volumetric energy density increase as well, uh, similar to the gravimetric energy density increase, I believe this could pave the way for a sodium ion powered Tesla Model 3 to have the same amount of range as the LFP equipped version right now, but at a slightly lower cost when it comes to the battery pack cost. So assuming that LFP battery energy density does not improve a lot in the future, which it very well may improve, but assuming that it doesn't, it looks like sodium ion batteries in the future could potentially be more energy dense than LFP batteries. But with all that being said, right now these batteries are only being used in small vehicles made in China, and I don't expect that we'll see these batteries in a Model 3 for um, quite a few years. It might eventually happen, but I don't believe it's going to happen until at least that second generation of battery technology. I also agree with Jordan from the limiting factor that most likely Tesla's next generation compact vehicle will not use sodium ion batteries, but instead will use the more mature lithium iron phosphate battery technology. But beyond use in electric vehicles, these sodium ion batteries could also be used a lot in the future in stationary energy storage environments. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.